Alrighty. <clears throat> Quick little conversation about the food shooting, food shooting that we've been working on for the last couple of days. Three things I wanted to sort of cover today in this quick little video is the lighting that we're doing for the food shooting, the camera angle that we're using, and the cropping that we're utilizing. So these three things I'm sort of seeing consistently be, I don't want to say troublesome, but these three things I think are, are a bit stumbling, uh, causing a few people to stumble a little bit. So first thing is the lighting. Uh, today, for this little setup here, I've just got a tiny little grid. Actually, let me take a little video of this so close. I've got a tiny little uh, grid in my Ellen Chrome light. Now, this one, this particular one, I think it's a 20 degrees, but they also make them in a, in a 40 degree and a 10 degree. And all that's doing is just, it's, it's just channeling the light gobling the light, it's not really shaping the light, it's just narrowing the beam of light because I just want a little bit of beam of light coming in across the pasta. But the important thing is, it's coming from the back. So it's, it's sort of coming across the food. That gives it a bit of sheen if you've got something wet, like you put sauce or something on that. Um, but it also creates this nice sort of room light. The other thing that it creates is a bit of shadow on the front. And the shadow is actually what creates the texture in the food. Now we can control the shadow from this light by this light. This is our fill light. And the fill light's not so important about the modifier and stuff. You could, you could bounce that off a wall. You could use an umbrella. If the school has octoboxes. That's just adding fill. You could even use a, well, no, I wouldn't use a card, but you could use anything that's a large, soft light source to come back in and light that. And I think that the trick is, when you're setting this up, start with one light. Shoot with one light, see what you're getting with one light before you move on to a second light. Because when you're putting two and three lights up, you don't know what's doing what, and it's just easier to build on one light than it is to sort of start with all of them, turn them all on, shoot it, and then go, well, what's doing what? This is a little bit easier. So, that's my light, that's my position, that's my setup. My camera angle. I prefer, and again, this is, I'm not saying this is right, I'm just saying this is my preference. My preference is to shoot at 45 degrees to the plate for two reasons. That gives you the best texture whenever you're rim lighting it from the back because angle of incidence, angle of reflection, I get a nice highlight on that. But more importantly, it mimics or it matches the plate as you would see it if you were sitting down to eat. Now, there's nothing wrong with the bird's eye view, like coming straight over top and shooting it that way. I don't know, that always feels a bit like a trough to me. So I, I, I like this angle better and I like that it's, it's the, brings me to my third point that I'm shooting in very close, like really close. Like if we look at this plate here, this plate is a, I'm gonna say that's a 10 inch dinner plate. And it's got a, the rim on it is very wide. We don't need all that rim in the shop. It's not adding it, anything to it. If anything, it makes the portion size small. Now th this would be a suitable presentation in the restaurant or even if you're eating dinner at home, but it doesn't really look so good in photography because it, diminishes the size of the portion on it if you're pulling way back and making everything look a little bit small. I'll show you what I mean. So, I've got my light in the background and let me try my first exposure here. On my camera, am I still on there? Yeah, so let me try my first exposure. And again, normally I would shoot this with all the overheads off, but just for the sake of this video, this will make it a little bit, a little bit clearer. And I actually don't mind that right out of, right out of the bat there. That's actually not bad. But again, start with one light. What is the one light doing? Before you put in like five, six, seven lights, all these fill cards and stuff, start with one light and see where you are. This one, I, I don't think that's actually, that's actually not bad just with one light. Um, I'd probably move in a little bit closer, give myself a little bit of bleed on the crop, but I'd probably move in a little bit closer. And I'd probably fill the shadows just a little bit more. So again, I'm using a softbox. I'll flip this one on. I'm shooting with Nellicrom, it doesn't matter what you're shooting with. Um, whatever your light source is, I'm just gonna make that one lower than my, so my fill light is lower than my, my main light. Let's try that, see what that looks like. Well, that's not bad. That's fine. Nope. I'll turn that up a little bit more. And again, there's no magic numbers to this. I know a lot of people like, like prefer to use lighting ratios and stuff. I, I, I don't. 
Um, I've just metered that to get my starting ballpark for it. Yeah, it's not bad. Anyways, that's the starting point. That's kind of where I'd like to sort of see you guys be in a few minutes of, of up and going and approaching this. So again, lights, harsh light in the back. Uh, I'm using a grid on that one, a number, it doesn't really matter, but I'm using a grid on that to keep my light a little bit raw. Uh, fill light at the front, 45 degrees. They're, they're sort of at off access to the camera a little bit. That gives me this, the shadows falling towards the camera. So uh, lighting is my number one position, or my number one issue. Number two would be the camera angle. Again, nothing wrong with the bird's eye view if you want to do that. I prefer the 45 degree, and I'll show you some samples of some other stuff I've shot that's 45 degrees. Uh, and then the last one is the cropping. Getting close. This, even this sample I'm doing here, it, it, it could come in a little bit closer um, based on the plate and such that I have. But, but bear in mind too, a lot of the food photography done today is viewed like on a, on a phone. It's viewed tiny. So if you're, you know, encompassing the whole table, it's too much. Um, if you're doing, uh, you know, Uber Eats or, or, or uh, one of the food delivery services, or even if you're looking at a menu online, you want to get in close to know what it is that you're buying. So um, that's it. Lights, camera position, moving close. We'll take a look at some of the samples that you guys have done uh, last week, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that there. Alrighty, thanks.